A Self-Healing Guide Chapter 1 A Healing Yourself Guide Heal Yourself 1 I'm worthy. I still want to be here. Be loved. Give love. Be kind, especially to yourself. Take care of yourself. Nobody cares about you as much as you do. Holistic healing is about the individual as opposed to his or her malady. It's about getting the person to take care of his or her own health. The basis of holistic healing is the belief that we are all healers. We can heal ourselves. Every individual's immune system is his or her mission control. It alone is responsible for healing from ill health. It's not about drugs, surgeries, and vaccines. They are an attack on the immune system. In some cases, they help but it's still all about the holistic healing of an individual, bar none. After everything I've read about healing, I've come to the conclusion that there are two wide dimensions to it. One, you have to take care of the practical stuff to maximize your comfort, reduce the possibility of stress in little things and maximize whatever medical treatments might help you. Know what drugs you're taking. Know about the treatments, surgeries, and holistic options. 2. The spiritual new age, holistic side, what some people would call hokiness. I've seen some holistic healing books at number 362.11 and number 615.5 at the library plus some of the books by hayhouse.com. It's a huge business. Self-healing is about one thing, how do you stay upbeat, inspired, feeling good and focused on healing yourself all the time. Of course, the basics are a given. Eat healthy foods. Sleep at least 8 hours a night. Go outside and walk around for at least an hour a day. Have a warm pet. Do physical activities. Do meaningful work. Have love and fun with friends and family, etc. I schemed an entire book of healing poetry. They tell you to read this positive literary stuff all the time. They call it inspirational literature. There are some new age books at number 133, number 150-159, Psychology, and number 200-299, Religion, at the library. The idea is not to get deep and feel down. It's about how you can feel exhilarated, inspired and good all the time so that the body feels powerful, strong and vital therefore thrives and heals itself. Hospitals are negative, sickly places of death and dying. Get out of the hospital if possible. Get some home care. Prepare a comfortable room and pursue the business of healing and revitalizing yourself. Feel upbeat all the time. There is some meditation to it but it's a holistic feeling you must have about yourself that you're a strong, vital, worthy, powerful, positive person out for the good of humanity and for yourself. Feel relaxed and strong. Do activities to make you feel that way. You must have a powerful peaceful state of being. Support groups are good. They lead you to friendships with people going through the same thing you are. Laugh and have fun. Watch funny shows and videos. If there are any negative people around you, get rid of them. If a close relative is allowed, obnoxious nag, get them out of the way somehow. Visit old friends or have them visit you if possible. Try basic yoga or just sit somewhere comfortably all stretched while focusing on deep breathing to get oxygen into your body. If you can afford a massage, get them regularly. If you're up for sex, do it. There is no shame in getting yourself off. Hug people. Hug your pets. Forgive yourself for things you might have done that you are ashamed of. Forgive your enemies. It doesn't matter now. Take time to relax and focus on the white divine healing power inside of you. Learn from others by reading stories of how people healed themselves from serious diseases. Listen to good music. Dance around. Have a sense of meaning in your daily activities. If you're angry at something, get rid of the anger somehow. One way is to not think about it. More medical treatment and drugs might not always be better for you. Sometimes it's better to lay off that stuff and trust your own efforts over conventional medicine. It's not about the meaning of life, it's about the feeling. Heal yourself too. To heal is to make whole, as in wholesome 
to make one again, to unify or reunify, this is Eros in action. Noman O. Brown, Love's Body. 1996. There are some books and articles out there about healing with love. The truth is that the capitalist, pop culture world we live in thrives by making people strive to be endless consumers and endless spectators of pop culture entertainment so we got millions of people, even married ones with families, living these materialistic, pop culture fantasies in their minds and there is no love there with other human beings. An atheist journalist and a cynical doctor went to this place and concluded that love or a loving climate can make a person feel more relaxed and help with seemingly miraculous healings. The doctor says that people have an inherent sense of goodness and dignity to them and if they rise to this potential within themselves, they become powerful. I had a Catholic upbringing. The sense of community was good at the time even though now I'm cynical and feel that most people are a bunch of hypocrites which is not to say that there aren't some truly loving, sincere poable out there. I just think that goodness and love for the human race is lost because the quest for profits brainwashes the people through endless advertising. Pushing a buy, buy, buy crap you don't need ideology is evil. I rest my case. This is life in the Western capitalist, pop culture world. We live in a loveless, polluted society. Your emotions affect so much more than your thoughts. They affect your soul and your body and can energize or destroy them, whichever you choose. Love changes the chemical pathways of the brain. Empathy might be a stronger medication than any drug. If you've ever felt true love for someone or something, you know it's all powerful. Love can conquer all if you let it flow into your mind, body and soul and live there forever to flow out of it into those you love. It's the only way to get through life relatively happy and unscathed by all the trivial crap out there. Sex, love, romance, music and nature are all healing entities. Use them all as warm, soft, glowing healers. Just reach out to someone or something like a pet. When you open your heart, it'll all come back multiplied. You can't fake it. When you feel love, you know it and as human beings, most of us instinctively know when somebody truly loves us. The first love is self-love. Don't be afraid to love yourself mightily and don't apologize for the cultural moray which makes it seem uncool to consciously love yourself too much both spiritually and physically. You gotta get to that point if you're not there now, that you gotta really, really feel it for someone and show it without any inhibitions. Only then will you know true love. It could be comfortable silence together or people talking about things that really matter. It doesn't matter how you express it, you can feel it. Help people, show compassion to the weak and forgive your enemies. It'll be a lot easier on your soul. You are what you think. Like attracts like. Positive attracts positive, negative attracts negative. Don't judge others. If you do, search your soul and see if you're projecting your own negative personality traits onto them. You're intertwined in the lives of other people so be a positive force and let your light shine through. Look at your life in depth. Take away all the negative things in your life. Fill yourself with love. The spirit of life lives in your soul. Give over all your negative baggage and pain to your God. Heal yourself with the warmth of God's love. Sensual touch is everything. Caring and intimacy are the greatest healers around. There's a field of holistic healing called the therapeutic touch which focuses simply on connecting with people and touching their bodies physically. We naturally want to be touched just like we were when we were babies. See how your pets like to be touched. Think of your lover as a human pet that can talk. Approach sex not as a mission or a task but as an expression of love for you partner. Make it relaxed and unpressured without preoccupation with the big O. Make contact with other people in a peaceful, loving way. The way you treat others always comes back to you multiplied if only for the way you feel about yourself. Treat them well and the love will come. Treat them poorly and someone will get you or give you the silent treatment. People give off vibes. If you're good at it, you can sense them aka the so-called aura. You should be able to tell if someone's balanced and feeling good or somewhat off simply by looking at them. The mind, body and soul are all united in the package the person presents to the world. It doesn't lie. 
everybody's face shows their life story then the stomach measure self-respect as an inverse function of its size. A huge factor in health is what I'll call the intimacy factor. People who have good friends that they can talk to, a good lover and slash or a good pet or god, have created a therapeutic infrastructure within themselves that feeds off this intimacy and thrives on it. In essence, go out and love somebody and your health will thrive. Conversely, lonely people are weaker, often run down, get sick and die more often than people with close emotional ties. If you're feeling down, get social support and slash or love yourself. Touch and hug someone, even a pet. Heal yourself 3. Compassion for yourself is the most powerful healer. This is the true joy in life, the being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one, the being thoroughly worn out before you are thrown on the scrap heap. George Bernard Shaw Western medical science generally focuses on particular diseases and maladies but as the Eastern philosophies know, all health stems from the soul. Strong soul equals healthy body, weak soul equals run-down body with a weak immune system so soul is the engine of your medical health. You can miraculously heal almost any disease with a strong soul if you really want to. The soul can do great things for the body if you let its radiance flow in on yourself. Most Western doctors have been brainwashed by drugs and surgery as the be-all, and all in medical care because this is where the money is made. Surgery just takes out the bad body part. It doesn't heal anything. Drugs just mask over the systems or control them. They don't heal the engine that is your body and soul. You take aspirin because you've been brainwashed to. It supposedly releases some chemical that will dullen or minimize your headache but it still doesn't mean that whatever caused that headache will go away so you're not really healed, just temporarily pacified. In the conventional medical industry, this is where the money is. Cut things out of people without healing their engines or give them drugs, assume that they will have that condition for the rest of their lives then keep cashing in both with the doctor visits to fill out new prescriptions and the drug companies who have another cash cow customer for life. For instance, if a doctor tells you that you have high blood pressure, he'll prescribe a drug for you that will artificially temporarily lower it but won't heal the engine that is you. He will assume you'll have high blood pressure for the rest of your life therefore be on the drug ad infinitum and that's the way it goes with conventional healthcare. Most diseases are disease of excess and deficiency caused by poor living habits, namely in three major areas. Malnutrition. Dehydration. Stress. We, in the West, have no problems eating lots of foods but the problem is that we generally eat foods that are processed with chemicals in them that contribute to the demise of our bodies. We are always expelling water through sweat, breath, and urination. Our body's cells need lots of water to be healthy and expel the toxins that accumulate in them. Whenever we eat, our stomachs need a lot of water to just digest the food. Despite all this, most people do not drink an adequate amount of water to keep the cells healthy and flush the toxins away so they stay in the body and build up over time. Stress in response to a tough situation like a deadline you have to meet for work or school or traffic gridlock as well as a stressful lifestyle in general causes the body to release several different types of adrenaline slash epinephrine into both the brain and the body which is ultimately corrosive and destroys the body over time, little by little, day by day. The actual principles for healthy living and self-healing cost nothing except for the healthy foods you should buy but this is not profitable to the healthcare corporations who have a vested interest in not curing people, only controlling or masking their symptoms which is why lifestyle is rarely encouraged as the critical determinant of health and healing except in the alternative, holistic sectors. The power of the human soul is the most important factor in determining overall health and the ability to heal oneself. Of even diseases that are considered serious and terminal. You get a serious disease one day at a time by the way you live. You can heal yourself the same way, one day at a time by living well provided your disease is not so far gone that it has taken over your body and destroyed your immune system but even then, there have been reversals by people who took their healing to heart, visualized it and did all the right things physically. On a global scale, all disease is caused by a weakened immune system caused when the nervous system, your engine, gets weak and tired and some virus or other toxin gets a chance to go in and trash it. Heal yourself for 
Some of the ways to help heal yourself are Rest Good nutrition A positive attitude Good friends Pets A comfortable setting A social support network Loving relationships Sharing your life with others Loving yourself Good sex Focusing on healing Relaxing Meditation Visualization Positive affirmations Forgiving yourself Forgiving others Facing the inevitability of death Loving life Loving the world Not hating yourself for bad things you might have done Having a belief in a God and an afterlife Overcoming the negatives in your life Staying away from too much booze and drugs Going easy on yourself Self-healing can be used to heal both physical illness and wounded souls. To heal yourself is to use the power of the mind to shine the radiant beam of light from your divine creator slash God into you to cleanse you plus the power of love, to be with people and pets, love them, support them and receive it back both consciously and subconsciously through the process. Beyond this is the power of the self to believe that you will get well and to have some purpose or some great vision of something you must still do with your life to keep you motivated and inspired as you work through your ordeal the best that you can in your weakened state. These things are the foundation to keep a strong body, mind, and soul and heal yourself of just about anything according to a lot of stories out there about people who triumphed over the most hopeless and terminal diseases. Norman Cousins in his pioneering holistic book Anatomy of an Illness came to the following conclusions about longevity and self-healing, to have a highly developed purpose and the will to live are among the prime raw materials of human existence. Be a giant among men in spirit and creative stature. Albert Schweitzer who died at 95 said, I have no intention of dying so long as I can do things. And if I do things, there's no need to die. So I will live along long time. The premise of love is give and you shall receive and it works. Self-love is loving and taking care of yourself, being proactive in your life and using every positive affirmation and mental trick you know to tell yourself you're a beautiful, vital hunk of humanity all the time. Of course you know that you're a holistic being. All parts of you are interconnected so what you think goes into the physical body which reacts via the thoughts you feed it. Calmness and peace of mind are the base from which you heal and strengthen your body, mind, and soul of anything. To heal and strengthen yourself means to live a full life, expend yourself doing what you love, pass your light onto the world somehow by helping and inspiring people and reap it back by your own good feelings of doing something worthy with yourself plus the goodwill of other people who appreciate what you do to help them. You must live in the moment for your real authentic self. Focus only on what's real not what you've been brainwashed by since day one. Faith and hope are very powerful healers created totally in the mind. A common technique is for people to imagine a great, white glowing ball of light entering into their bodies and go to the source of the malady to cleanse it all away. Regardless of your age, you can become younger simply by willing it so in your mind. Deal with your anger. Let it out. Open your heart, love yourself love people, love the world. It all starts in your soul. You have to feel right about yourself, that you're on the right track with your life. You have to be a loving person. Love your family, love everyone you come across. You must live for youthful spark and inspiration all the time. You have to be strong and positive no matter how bad your illness and your pain is and how weak you feel. Explore your inner self, the good the bad and the ugly. Find your one true beautiful vision then keep it in your mind as your source of inspiration while you work hard to get close to it in real life. Visualize yourself as a beautiful, healthy young person with a spring in your step and a dance in your soul. Draw beautiful things, sing beautiful songs to yourself, write your thoughts down, meditate, take long walks out in nature, do anything that'll soothe your mind, body, and soul. Pray to your God. Find others who also believe in your God and hang around with them for a while on a regular basis in a fellowship of worship. Find a support group or a friend with the same type of illness to talk things out with. Volunteer somewhere to see for yourself that you're still luckier than a lot of broken down souls out there. Nothing's impossible.
believe in miracles for yourself. You must always have hope and a faith in God. Go easy on yourself. Try to think light happy thoughts. Forgive all your enemies and try to tolerate people you don't really like. Finally, make peace with yourself. Realize that death is part of the life cycle, it will happen to you sooner or later so you might as well look it in the eye, resolve to yourself that you've lived the best life you could, accept the rest as a gift from God, keep moving and have no regrets no matter what. For the wounded soul, self-healing comes down to love, namely self-love at the beginning, to love yourself enough to go easy on yourself, heal, work and hope for a better future where you become a more peaceful, graceful person. It's better to be positive than negative. Don't let the emotional pain of life's problems get you down. Compassion and gentleness for yourself and the world is the thing that gets you back in the right frame of mind. Be alone for a while but talk things out with friends. In time, you'll heal. There are many books at the library that attempt to help you get calm like Stress Management, number 155, number 613, Buddhist Philosophy, number 294, The Holistic Section, number 615.5, Self-Help Books, number 155-158, General Medical Books, number 611-613, and The Mental Healing Section, Number 616.89, RC81, or RZ401. Heal Yourself 5. Wikihow.com slash self hyphen heal. Eat well. Get enough sleep. Relax and unwind. Reduce stress. Exercise. Breathe for relaxation. Take a break. Develop supportive relationships. Listen to your body. Engage in creative activities. Don't smoke. Practice self-hypnosis. Meditate. Do not carry negative emotions around from past experiences. Use guided imagery. Believe you can heal yourself. Cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Love yourself. Life is interconnected and interdependent. Pray. Take part in healing circles. Try biofeedback. Use essential oils. Get massage therapy. Journey towards spiritual self-mastery. Try Qigong. A summary of the book How to Heal Yourself When No One Else Can by Amy B. Skur, 2017. Self-developmentsecrets.com slash how hyphen to hyphen heal hyphen yourself hyphen summary. A woman with Lyme disease used conventional medical treatments, took a lot of pills and injectants before she decided to look for a better way to deal with her illness. She healed herself by summoning her inner energy to overcome the illness using mind, spirit, and body, exercise and nutrition. It was a three-part process. Part 1, Surrender, Accept, and Flow. Accept your situation. Don't deny. Fight your illness. You're not a passive person listening to a doctor, you're actively fighting the disease. Part 2, Identify Blockages. Be positive. Listen to your body. When it says rest, rest. Part 3, Change your relationship with stress. Release old feelings and harmful beliefs. Change unhealthy habits like negative self-talk and fear. Use the power of the mind to heal your body. Calm your mind. Summon your inner energies. Find yourself, be free and happy. A Summary of the Book You the Healer by Robert B. Stone and Jose Silva, 1992. Goodreads.com slash book slash show slash 184956.u underscore the underscore healer. Self-developmentsecrets.com slash you hyphen the hyphen healer hyphen summary. You the healer guides you on how you can change your health through the power of your mind based on the Silva method. The book contains 40 instructions. Part 1 the 40 daily sessions mostly about the deep relaxation of the mind, active relaxation. Picture positive images. Get full relaxation by slowing the alpha waves. Become one with your mind and reduce alpha waves. Existing on this level gives a person a blissful feeling alone within oneself. You are aware of the outside world but not actively in it. You are at ease. Imagine yourself a strong vital person. 
Minimize destructive thoughts. Help other humans and animals. Live a healthy long life. Session 40 is called Peace of Mind. A person with peace of mind is a master at controlling their alpha waves. Part 2, The Silva Vision. Use both hemispheres of the brain. Use intuition. Don't be greedy. Live with what you have. Part 3, Specific Applications, A Reference Guide on How to Use What You Have Learned. Chapter 2. Healing Topics. Strengthen Your Immune System Slash Immune Enhancement. Your immune system determines how healthy or sick you are. If it's strong, it kills all the toxins that enter your body. If it isn't, these toxins will overpower your body, make you sick and possibly kill you. Immune System Strengthening Products The following websites sell products that claim to help strengthen and enhance your immune system. 4-H-E-A-L-T-H-D-I-R-E-C-T.com a one s u p p l e m e n t s dot com, a h c c dash n u t r i e n t s dot com, mushroom blend for enhancing the immune system. Aloha medicinals dot com, a m e r i c a n dash l o n g e v i t y dot com, n a t u r a l dash t r e a t m e n t dash g u i d e dot com, polarity therapy slash energy healing. PolarityTherapy.org, American Polarity Therapy Association